are talking about controllers, and we're just yes. going to do one kind of on the um, Adam. Uh, how do you say that? Anatomy of oh, a controller. Anatomy of a controller. Yeah. yeah. So we you just didn't kinda, write it down, so I couldn't remember it. Okay. okay. Sorry. Anatomy. Yeah. So we're really just going to kind of go over the uh, different parts of a controller. Yes. And maybe how they function. Well, the difference. Well, actually, the difference between E3, E4. And the new uh, new KL series. Yeah. So you, well, the first thing that you need to know is it doesn't matter if you have a CNC machine that has one axis or six axis. You need a controller right. to uh, take those computer uh, on off bits, you know, step direction. In, in most cases, for all, right. all of us hobbyists, to get it to move the machine around. So let's get started. Okay. All right. So all the right. first thing uh, for the E3 and the E4, you have a 12 volt power supply. Uh, we have an 8 amp uh, box, but really and truly. Our controller runs at about four amps. Now this is why I feel better. I have two power supplies, and they're both 24 volts. So I have 48 volts. 48 volts. Yeah. Yes. And they deliver Sorry. like eight four? amps a piece, or 7.3. Yes. Yeah. Like the drivers draw up yeah. at about four amps. Yeah, four amps a piece. So uh, yeah, you got uh, yeah 16 amps going on there maximum. Of course, it probably never gets to that unless you're no. really dogging the machine pretty good. But right. uh, so yeah, so that's the power supply. So. Uh, it's a pretty simple, just a plug-in for yep. uh, the uh, E3 and E4 for our controller box for the KL7. Uh, a couple mm -hmm. of them, uh, two, one for the X-axis and yep. one for the Y and Z-axis. Yep. So we're separating them out that way. Okay, so the next thing that you're going to have if we start from the, uh, that direction would be those are connected to the drives. So on the, um, the E3 and the E4, you can see right here, that uh, these just come out of the sockets. The orientation is the same. You, you don't want to flip them upside down or you let the magic smoke out and you know things don't work if you let the magic smoke out. So yeah. we don't want to do that. But uh, Have you done that? Oh yeah. Oh. I can tell you stories about magic <laughs> smoke and a little bit of fire. <laughs> but I won't. That's how okay. you learn electronics if you're you know <laughs> mechanical guy. Okay. Right? But uh, yeah, so these are the, they're called DRV8825s. Uh, you know, when we ship them out, we set the current, but you would just install them and uh, go ahead and put the pins in and then just go ahead and set the current and right. you'd be ready to go. Uh, what you have are these uh, orange boxes, right? Yes. So they're, uh, they're servo drives, not stepper drives. Stepper drives could probably look about the same. Um, they do have uh, switches on them so that they, uh, you can set the resolution in the direction. What kind of switches are yeah. those, Keith? Dual inline package switches. Dip switches. Yeah, that's it's your a, favorite thing. It is, yeah. I like dip switches. Yeah, I know. But, uh, so it has those on it, uh, and, uh, and it's ready to be connected. Now, yes. the thing that you're gonna notice that is really cool about the E3 and the E4 right. is that uh, everything comes apart and there's no real wires except for connecting it. So. The microprocessor here is uh, an Arduino Uno type. Uh, we like the Keys Studio. And same thing here. Same exact board there, right? Uh, we're going to use this middle board as a shield, and what that shield does is actually it ties all of those Arduino pins to the shield that sends them to the driver. Uh, for the KL7 series, we're wiring the drivers directly to this uh, screw shield. Right, so there's going to be lots of wires, so you're yep. going to hook up all your step and directions right. uh, and the alarm plus the power. So in this one, all of that is done for you through the shield, Right. Uh, where the controller box for the KL7, uh, there's going to be a whole chapter in the manual yep. just uh, dedicated. It's not hard, to you just have to pay attention to details. Absolutely. Make sure you hook up the right color wire to the yeah, what right terminal, that's it. Yeah. And yeah. you got to get it right, or it doesn't work. No. Yeah, I don't. Well, blame Bob. Well, you know, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't done one right yet. And I've kind of hooked up four or five, but it seems okay. like I always get my colors mix, mixed up. I don't know why that is. So yeah, you want to pay attention really yeah. close when you're doing that. So uh, um, on the other uh, part of this machine, if he sets it down there, oh, sorry. Uh, the E3 and the E4 doesn't have this. However, Brian from Wooden Creations, I'll give him a plug. He actually has a little. Uh, a uh, box that has a resume and a hold button. Yep. And you know, we were kind of jealous, so we've included that on our KL7. So you get the resume and the hold. And to one up, Brian, we actually added emergency stop too. Right. Uh, and uh, there's a reason for that, and we'll go into that later. But emergency stop is always good to have. It's going to stop all of the drivers. However, unless you hook a spindle up, uh, it will not stop the spindle. So. Uh, we think well, that's been well, useful. Gonna, uh, not that. Uh, okay, you're going to interrupt me. Go yes, ahead. I am, because why won't it stop a spindle? 
Well, we don't, we don't directly connect our spindle into the microprocessor board. Okay. And the reason I don't do that is really safety. Um, okay, so you're like, you're like um, a manual shutoff. Yeah, I like the manual shutoff because okay. I want to know my router shutoff. Yeah. If you do hook it now, up. if you'd said that, that would have made sense to me. Okay, well, I did now since you okay, asked. Okay, manual shutoff. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so if you do hook it up to where it's automatic so the, uh, the G-code turns on and off your spindle. Yes. For crying out loud, when you are changing your bits, unplug that router. I yes. mean, electronics can oh, go bad geez. anyway. But uh, a router bit with your fingers connected to it when it turns on will tear things up pretty fast. Yep. So yeah, safety first, and you know that's really the bottom line is I could why see we don't pain do that. In your future. Yeah, yeah. It, I've done stuff like that. Yeah, I've done some stupid <laughs> stuff too, but that's a different show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Dumb stuff by Keith and Bob. Yeah, we'd be popular. No, that no, would go on for a long time too, because no, we got no. lots of material. Yes, we do. Anyway, so yeah, so we want to keep you safe out there. So. Uh, if you have any questions about the controller, uh, let us know, either one. Um, I'm good. You're good? I'm done. Okay. Well, I've I said thinking, everything I know. Yeah, and there's hurt. one other thing that I really should have said that I should no, have talk, talked about uh, micro-stepping versus one versus the other. Think we could throw it in on the end here? Why? Why is it important? Well, if you get it wrong, your machine only moves half or it moves twice as far as you think it does. Okay, well, tell me about it. Well, for the servo drivers, it's done by the uh, DIP switches. I got to use that word again. Dual inline, inline package. package. Yeah. Uh, for the uh, for <laughs> our microprocessors, if you pull one of the drivers off, you will see jumper pins. And these jumper pins set the micro stepping of the okay. stepper motors. Now I understand. Yeah. All right. So now I think we've covered you, everything that okay. we need to cover. You feel good? Well, I kind of feel good. You good. Feel good. I hope you guys feel good. Till next time, we'll see ya. All right. Hey, if you got any questions, email us at shoptalk at bobcnc. Thanks, guys. Dot com. Dot com.